Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today, and I have a meta snapshot for you, a bit of a scuffed one, my version. Now this time I have kind of a ton of decks, I also not only kind of took decks that I've seen quite a bit of and that I've played, but also, you know, things that other people have said are quite common. So I looked at TLG's meta snapshot, and I, I copy-pasted a couple of decks from there that I haven't really played with. Uh, but that, you know, I have pretty good confidence in, uh, in terms of being pretty strong or pretty popular. Uh, and basically, yeah, how this functions is, here I've got all of the Gwent decks that are quite common in some form, the archetypes which are quite popular, and then I've ranked them by tiers, with tier 1 being the best and tier 4 being the worst. But bear in mind that all of these decks are quite playable, they're actually, you know, probably all capable of getting to pro rank, you know, that kind of strength, um, and, you know, maybe even doing okay on pro ladder as well. So just because a deck is tier 4 doesn't mean it's terrible, and the difference between tier 1 and tier 4 might not actually be that big uh, in terms of just the, the sheer power level. It's more just a way to kind of separate the decks because there's so many of them, but uh, you'll find that on this patch a lot of the stuff is quite similar in power level in, in terms of decks. Most stuff is, is of a similar strength. There's a lot of stuff in tier 2 I've got here, and quite a bit in tier 3 as well. And that's just because it's very hard to separate those. They're very similar in power level, really. And bear in mind, this is the power level of the decks when they're not kind of being interrupted or countered by, you know, uh, something like an Igni against Harmony or Yerden or whatever like that. It's, it's more when the deck works, when it's activating its game plan most of the time, this is how strong it is, it fits into this tier. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Now, some people will probably say Nilfgaard is tier 1. I would say that I don't think it is. I think Squirtel is a level above Nilfgaard in terms of what they can do, and that's both with Harmony and with Elves. So I have both a Harmony deck and sort of a an elf, uh, Elf-ish Harmony deck, uh, which is kind of a hybrid thing, which is quite popular on the ladder at the moment. Uh, and yeah, both of these decks are very, very strong, very good at what they do. Of course, Harmony still kicking after, you know, many, many patches. Uh, this version here of, of kind of Harmony Elves, if you want to call it that, has a bit of Harmony, has a bit of Elves. So it does have long round potential, but also burst potential with that those Elves flowing onto the board. You're not super committed to the Elf game plan. You don't run Isengrim. Uh, you do run Aileron, though, and of course, uh, you know, Yaven. Uh, the Elias and Venosil, etc. So you have a bit of burst, a bit of long round, a bit of poison, just a good deck able to control very well uh, and, you know, have a lot of threats, a lot of win conditions. And, you know, of course, Harmony, we've seen a lot of at this point, still running waters. A lot of them run Pavco these days, which is kind of a, a pretty solid human, you know, two points per turn, another threatening engine really has to be dealt with, another movable target, so you don't care as much because you already have Hawker, and you maybe can play a Dragoon to maybe move him back if he does get moved. But yeah, that's the only really noty, no, uh, noteworthy thing here. Uh, other than that, it's just a regular Harmony list. Very, very good at pushing long rounds and pushing the opponent with waters in round two as well can be very, very strong. Or even without waters and saving those for a round three finisher. But yeah, very powerful deck, as I'm sure you guys are aware. So then in tier two, I would say we've got kind of the all-in elf decks. And this you know, is usually going to be with Rodea, uh, with the Deadeye Ambush, with Scenario. And these kind of decks are a little bit a little bit more susceptible to things like Bomb Heaver uh, and just generally inconsistency with drawing. So it's a little bit weaker than the sort of hybrid elves and stuff like that, but it's still pretty damn powerful. You still have all of the strength of those, you know, uh, elf cards and oak and all that good stuff that Scoia'tael has. And, you know, playing the uh, the Rodea does mean your bronzes are a bit weaker, but overall this deck's still very, very good. Still a tier 2, still can contend with a lot of stuff. And we also have Nilfgaard. We have a lot of different formulations of Nilfgaard, I think, that are tier 2 worthy. The first here is the Imperial Formation Bull deck, which does run one bull and a lot of soldiers as well in the bronzes. As well as this version's got Triss and Lacerate. Uh, just to kind of deal with elves and deal with wide boards quite effectively. Yeah, you can play uh, other, you know, other cards here, maybe a uh, uh, Aristocrat, you know, for example, the Vincent is is an okay option sometimes uh, instead of Triss, and you can, you can swap out Lacerate as well if you want, but those are pretty nice for dealing with wide boards. 
And that's Nilfgaard's usual problem if you're playing ball, you don't really have wide, you know, punish. So putting the Lacerin in there helps quite a bit. And okay, next up, what do we have? We've got Syndicate decks. I'll show you some other versions of Nilfgaard in a second, but we do have some Syndicate decks. Here we've got a Jackpot deck, which I was playing. Actually, I optimized it a little bit more than the version I was playing. Pickpocket, very, very helpful to get your coins up, MK and Passiflora to do that. And yeah, Jackpot's a very decent leader. I'd say it's about as, as powerful as Blood Money, although a lot of people favor Blood Money. Uh, just, you know, it's better against decks where you don't need that removal option. Obviously, it's weaker against decks where you do. So you're thinking like Great Swords, Harmony. It's going to be a bit weaker against those things, but against everything else, it's it's quite a bit better. Having the Jackpot enables you to go for a Soul straight away. Uh, and yeah, I don't see too much Jackpot around, so this is kind of my, my spice that I'm throwing into the snapshot. But yeah, it's not super popular. But Jackpot's a good option for Syndicate. Likewise, Blood Money. Blood Money is definitely the more popular alternative. And Blood Money is very strong. You have the removal. And, you know, this is just the same deck from a few patches ago, of course. Madame Louisa is a bit weaker now. But overall, it's a, you know, a pretty strong deck still. Can definitely hold its own in a lot of matchups. Gonna struggle a little bit against Elves if you don't run Tin Boy. So, you know, think about uh, putting that guy in and uh, swapping around uh, some of the top end here, potentially. If you have trouble against, you know, elves and those wide boards, Tin Boy can definitely help you deal with those. Okay, and next up we've got some Skellige. Skellige here, I've put great swords in tier 2 because I think they're a very good deck, especially against the kind of top tier, uh, you know, factions at the moment, so the Skirtels. Skirtel has typically quite a bit of difficulty dealing with uh, great swords. They do have movement, which helps. But, uh, you know, quite often they're going wide with either Waters uh, or, you know, Elves, and both of those things play quite heavily into Wild Boar and Greatswords. Plus it can be difficult, you know, if you're running a, a typical kind of Harmony deck to have enough poison to kill a lot of Greatswords. So, yeah, generally I'd say Second Wind, you know, this um, this kind of Greatsword deck is a bit favoured against Squirtel decks, which means it's probably a Tier 2 deck. It's just pretty good against the best uh, decks at the moment, it st probably struggles a bit against Nilfgaard and stuff, but you have so many threats in Great Swords that, you know, you're never really too worried about a few of your guys getting removed, and that's kind of where the power comes from. But yeah, Great Swords is definitely a, a strong deck for Skelliger. A bit difficult to pilot, but yeah, pretty powerful. So another tier 2 Nilfgaard deck here, in my opinion, is uh, the kind of formation relying on Stefan and Tactics. So instead of that Masquerade Ball, you've got the Helga, the Stefan, the Letho. And that can get some real nice value in certain matchups. Going to be a little bit better than a bull kind of deck against, uh, you know, wide boards again, elves um, and, and stuff like that. Just because having the soldiers and going all in on the soldiers and on the tactics, yeah, it's just better in general against Squirtel, Bribery, Oak, stuff like that. So yeah, I'd say that's a bit better overall against, against Squirtel, uh, particularly elves. But of course, having a bit less tool removal. In fact, this deck could definitely do with some tool removal. So if you, uh, you know, think about adding that in with either poisons in the bronze core or, uh, you know, Yennefer's invocation, things like that, definitely, you know, could be useful here uh, since the deck doesn't currently have any. So, you know, and with all these decks, they're just kind of a baseline, you know, they might not be perfect. So keep that in mind and, and of course, tweak them and change them as you see fit. And then next up we have Northern Realms. Uprising got pretty pretty heavily nerfed actually on the last patch with the one less charge for the ability. So this is a Draug deck, pretty much unchanged from last patch, but mm, you know still a bit uh, a bit weaker for sure. Uh, but still a pretty good deck. Like you've got that power. Of course, the Draug being bleedable is quite a big downside. So this deck at higher ranks is going to be a bit more questionable. But with Northern Realms, you often uh, can make life a bit weird for the opponent when they don't know if you have drag or not. Maybe it's not uh, you know fully worth it for them to push you, or maybe they uh, kind of give it up because they're not 100% sure if you have it. And you're running Philippa and stuff, which could indicate that you don't necessarily have drag. So, you know, in theory, this deck is, is still pretty good. There are other various variations of Northern Realms that I'll show you, though, in just a second, which I think are also okay. We've got Mobilization, we've got Uprising Mid-Range, so I can show you both show mobilization first and this is the deck that i had a youtube video on of course feel free to change some of the cards here you know 
some of them are not super good necessarily, like Sheila. Uh, you can maybe play around with Igni, uh, maybe put Baron in because that card's good. But really the core here is Royal Guards and Vanguards, the, the double double team as it were, uh, with Adelia reinforcements. Pretty strong mobilization actually guaranteeing your kind of, uh, yeah, those guys as a finisher can be very, very good. So this is definitely a solid option for Northern Realms. And yeah, don't worry that there's a difference in tiers between these kind of decks, because they're all quite similar in power level, uh, all these different Northern Realms variations. And same thing here with the Rodea lists, you know, just a good solid amount of points on pretty much every play. Obviously your bronze core is a bit weaker, but your top end with this kind of a deck is very, very powerful. And that's going to, you know, uh, allow you to deal with a lot of stuff pretty effectively again. As with most things, of course, tech them in the way that you want to tech them. If you want to put a bomb heaver in, then by all means do that. Or take a bomb heaver out, uh, then, then go ahead. If you want to put in a lacerate to deal with elves or something, then you can always do that. So, you know, these, these decks aren't set in stone, and depending on the meta you're running into and uh, the variations of you know, what, what different opponents you're playing against, then it could be good to swap and change some cards. What else do we have for tier 3? Well, we've got Double Bull, I think, is quite safely a tier 3 deck. It could be a bit higher in, in kind of, uh, you know, tier or uh, power level, but I think it fits quite nicely into this tier because it is very vulnerable to being bomb heavered uh, since you're not running Defender in this particular version. So if the opponent has a bomb heaver, it's going to be very telegraphed that you're going to be playing a scenario and they're probably going to get bomb heaver value. The one upside is your decision, tactical decision, can often activate ball straight away and deny bomb heaver value if they save it for round three. So, you know, the deck is pretty strong. Uh, it's kind of similar to something like Lippy or even Monsters in terms of being able to abuse the coin flip and punish certain matchups and certain players that don't have bomb heaver or the text to deal with you. So that's kind of where Double Bull fits in. It's a good deck, but it has some weaknesses which, which hold it back from being kind of super top tier. And a similar story with the other tier 3 decks that I have here, really. Um, we do have another Skellige deck, which is kind of uh, Giddeneth, uh, you know, uh, Wild Boar Hybrid, which I've never been a huge fan of as a deck. It has, you know, definitely some good tools and ways that can, can work. You know, you've got the short round with the Giddeneth, you've got the long round with Wild Boar. But Skellige is very, very bleedable, and this deck is no exception. The one upside is you're able to often control round one with Wild Boar and, and, you know, win the round that way and get control of the game. But if you find yourself being pushed, it can be very awkward sometimes having not set up your graveyard uh, for that second wind Giddeneth play and stuff like that. So I'm not the biggest fan of it and I don't think it's super strong, but it, it's definitely a deck worth considering. Now, same story with Lippy. Lippy is kind of a coin flip abuse deck more, more than anything really at the moment. Uh, of course, you have all this tempo in Roach and Knickers and stuff that will come out if you do win the coin flip, it's very very good because the opponent's going to probably lose on even cards and then you can push and bleed uh, and get Ceres out in round 3 short round. Uh, a little bit weaker on blue coin because you end up, you're going to end up over committing to round 1 most of the time and that will mean that the opponent can kind of just defend your bleed very well in round 2 and uh, end up maybe taking a card off of you or holding on to their good stuff around 3 as well. So. Very much a coin flip abuse deck, very good when it works, kind of not so good at all when it when it doesn't, so it probably fits into tier 3 here. Definitely got some weaknesses, but it's a strong deck. Same sort of story with monsters. Monsters and vampires here is the version I've got for Blood Scent. Pretty, so, uh, pretty solid deck, realistically. Uh, a lot of points, but definitely a downside in that, you know, uh, if they have removal for lava, if they have a lot of tool removal in their deck, then you're going to get punished. Also can sometimes be a bit awkward to get value from Oriana and things, you know, in some cases where maybe they don't have a big board built up, uh, or, you know, you're in a short round three of some kind and bleeding can be hard to get value from. Just overall, not the best deck ever, but, you know, pretty, pretty decent. Doesn't have as many weaknesses and pitfalls as something like Lippy with the inconsistency. It's more uh, versatile in that sense, but the overall power level of monsters is probably a bit lower than that of something like a double Ceres. And then we're down to the tier 4 decks, and you might be surprised to see Congregate here, but I don't rate Congregate as a leader and as an archetype very seriously. I think it's kind of not very good, uh, and, you know, I might be wrong about that. This is the version here. I got this one from TLG's website. Um, but typically Congregate, most of its points actually come from the Horse and Senior, uh, getting the cut-up lackeys, which will deal, 
you know, two damage when they're bonded. And I think typically if you have a bit of removal, you can deal with a couple of those guys, then you're pretty much often going to be favored against this deck because it just simply doesn't have as many points as something like a regular Syndicate or a Scoia'tael deck or even Nilfgaard, etc. Doesn't really have the points uh, behind it. Uh, it's a cool gimmick, and yeah, uh, a lot of people play it, so that's why it's here, but I don't think it's the strongest. Although, you know, a lot of people have success with it, that might just be due to opponents not properly dealing with it. Uh, and, I mean, it does have a lot of points in certain situations, in, you know, very specific push scenarios where you push the opponent. It can be quite deadly, uh, but I think overall it's just a deck that's very easy to overcommit to rounds two with, uh, and, you know, also lacking power if the opponent has answers. So, yeah. That's my take on Congregate, but it's, it's an alright list, don't get me wrong, you can definitely win games with it, you can almost certainly get to pro rank with it. And same story with Kikimore Queens still. This deck's still pretty much unchanged from last patch, I mean it's very good still, in terms of uh, if you want that gimmick approach of just having a bunch of points, uh, not really interacting with the opponent, just doing your own thing, uh, then if you can pilot this very well, then it has potential to be quite strong. I think it's never going to be you know, a high tier deck just because it's very vulnerable and doesn't have responses to the opponent's stuff. But, you know, it's it's not bad. You have a lot of points. You can do pretty well with this deck and it has some good matchups. Also has some very bad ones like Great Swords are horrible. Poisons are a bit annoying to deal with realistically. Uh, but, you know, against Square Tail and stuff, you definitely have a decent matchup. So, again, not the best deck ever, but it's a consideration if you want to play something different to vampires, if you want to play something somewhat competitive with monsters, but you know, definitely not the best and a bit vulnerable to certain things. So that'll do me here guys. That's my meta snapshot. It's a bit scuffed, a lot of decks this time, so I'm not able to go as in depth on every single one of them as I usually do, uh, but I hope that's okay. I'll of course link all the decks in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you want more videos and to you know, get those in your home page and your subscription box, etc. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, uh, and stay safe. Have luck. Have luck. Good luck. Have fun out there, and I'll see you next time.